today um, we will look at a quick introduction to open telemetry uh, and how genios can monitor applications that emit um, open telemetry data. Um, I have a few slides to introduce the topic, um, then we'll jump into a, a demo. Um, I should add that open telemetry is a huge topic um, and we're not going to have the time to cover all aspects of it, uh, but I hope it gives you an idea of um, what you can um, do with Genios um, today. <clears throat> so what is open telemetry? Um, it is a, a vendor neutral, um, open source standard uh, and a set of tools. Um, so it's, it's both a protocol um, and a set of tools to enable consistent data collection uh, for application monitoring. Um, so using these standards and tool sets, um, you can instrument your applications to emit um, useful data. Uh, this doesn't mean that you need to have access to source code. Um, there is a, a growing set of libraries available in the community um, that allow you to uh, do automatic instrumentation for many of the common technology stacks that you might um, you might have. Um, it supports a, a wide range of languages like C++, Java, Python, .NET and more. Um, so you're pretty well covered for um, whatever your application stack is based on. Um, and you can collect metrics, logs, and trace data. Uh, so you have the three key types of data you need uh, for monitoring and observability. Um, to, to clarify, um, Open Telemetry is not an aggregation backend for your data. It is essentially a standard for collecting and transporting data to other systems. Um, and, and today we are talking about aggregating this data um, in Genios. So you have this visibility alongside all your other monitoring, like the market data, infrastructure, Kubernetes, cloud, and others. You could argue um, application instrumentation has been around for a long time. Um, so why do we need a, a new standard now? So StatsD is still pretty good. Um, then there's Prometheus for metrics, um, Syslog, FluentD, uh, Logstash, and others for, for logs. Um, so there are plenty of options for application monitoring. So what, why open telemetry? Um, there are lots of good reasons, uh, but the key one is um, key one is um, is that it provides a common vendor neutral standard and format. So why is that important? Because in the increasingly containerized and um, distributed architecture that most people are now moving into, alongside your metrics and logs, you need some level of tracing. Um, in order to gain that visibility. Um, so standardizing the way you collect trace data uh, makes a lot of sense. Um, also, a, a common vendor neutral standard uh, means that engineering can make sure applications and their dependent services can emit data uh, that is useful for DevOps and operations teams um, to, to monitor. So this really brings the engineers, uh, the DevOps and the operations teams into, into alignment. Um, so similar to how uh, Kubernetes became a, a popular standard for monitoring um, container workloads. Um, open telemetry is the standard for making applications more observable or visible by emitting useful data. Um, so more importantly, be because it's a vendor neutral standard, many application frameworks and databases and web servers and other technologies have instrumentation baked into them. So this kind of sort of broad adoption um, benefits everyone. So let's look at um, a, qu a quick look at how Genios can collect this data. Um, so we have a new plugin that's available now that can listen for open telemetry data. Uh, the plugin supports TLS encryption and authentication. So you have secure connectivity with the app um, sending the data. Um, today we fully support uh, metrics, logs, and uh, derived uh, metrics from trace spans. Um, I think everyone knows what metrics and logs are, but what are spans? They are essentially, um, they're really the building blocks uh, of a trace. Uh, and we can derive important metrics like um, error rate, uh, number of failed requests, um, compared to total requests, for example, um, the duration of a request, um, how long an operation took. So these are key indicators for an operations teams to, to monitor. Um, and, and we can extract these metrics from the from the trace. Um, what we what we don't do today is to store uh, the raw trace data. 
but that is on the roadmap for us to do uh, in a future release. Um, traces produce high volume of data. So some of you might decide that it's too costly to store all the data. Uh, but what we can do today is to extract the key metrics out of those traces. Uh, so you still have a, a pretty good operational visibility into, into those highly distributed deployments. Now, before I um, start the demo, um, I want to use this diagram to, to quickly explain the, the demo environment. So it gives you some context to what I'm talking about. Um, so it's a simple example. Uh, we have a server hosting three apps. Uh, the gray boxes are the applications we want to monitor, and the blue boxes are the monitoring pipeline. So that's the RTRS components um, that we need. And the front end is a Python app that is running on a Flask web framework. Um, that calls the backend service, which in turn calls uh, uh, an external API um, in order to pull some data in. Um, we also have a custom Java app uh, that is manually instrumented to show some example metrics, logs, and, and trace data. Uh, both the front-end app um, and the back-end app don't have any open telemetry-specific code in them. Uh, but they are run with the automatic instrumentation library um, for Flask framework um, so that we will still get traces and spans being created automatically, even though there's no instrumentation in the code. Um, then we have the NetProbe and the collection agent running on the same host. Um, collection agent and the plugin will receive the data. Uh, it normalizes to our data model and creates the data points. Uh, which the NetProbe uses uh, to dynamically create the, the Genios data structures like the entities, samplers, and data views. Um, I should add, um, this is a simple example, uh, but the concepts um, uh, applied to your apps running in Docker or in cloud or in Kubernetes or in other systems um, that are you know, essentially dynamic environments. Right, so with that, let's jump into, um, into the demo. Let me switch over. Right, so I have here um, the NetProbe is running and the gateway is running in the, in the background. Uh, and that server is being monitored at the moment. So you can see the uh, infrastructure data, uh, CPU data, and the processes, um, uh, all that being monitored. What we don't have in here at the moment is the, uh, the application metrics themselves. Um, and that's because the applications haven't been started up. So let's go and start those apps. So let me just do that now. So we've got the backend app, just the Python app. Um, let's start the front end as well. Right, and, um, and this is the Java example. Um, so I'll just point out, so the, the Java app, for example, um, you run, uh, we're running it with the open telemetry Java agent. So that allows us to do the instrumentation. Um, and I'm, we're also passing the, um, some extra attributes like the service name, um, uh, the environment, uh, the team. So these attributes will help us to sort of create the, the, the state tree and, and the general structures in a way that it makes sense to us. All right, let's start the app. Um, so just on the, on the Python app as well. So um, the Python um, apps, the front end and the back end apps, um, both of them, as I said earlier, don't have any uh, specific instrumentation in them, but I'm using the Flask Open Telemetry library um, to run the app, um, which means we will automatically get some data sent to us. <clears throat> right, you can see here the um, running those apps have created an entity and then data views, uh, and we can see metrics coming through. Um, we also have uh, an FKM sampler that's been created dynamically. Um, so that custom app is sending some logs and the FKM sampler is listening to those logs. So you can monitor that um, log stream coming in as well. Um, and then we've got some metrics as well. You can see that the front end and the back end apps are running um, and they are right now producing metrics um, mainly about the system and, and some of the runtime properties. Uh, but we haven't really got any metrics about um, the app uh, itself uh, in terms of the, the traces and the spans. Um, and that's because 
we haven't really interacted with the app. So in order to produce the trace and the span, we need to interact with the app um, so that we can see some traces come in. So let's do that now. So let's go to the app. Uh, there you go, this app is running. Uh, we can make some calls, uh, go to the back end, uh, create some traffic um, so that we start seeing some trace data come through. And then that should be, oh, we can see that here. So those trace data are now picked up uh, and are available. Those metrics are now available in, in a data view here. So both back end and front end have additional data view showing um, the key metrics that's been pulled out of the, uh, the trace. Um, so things like the count, the error count, and the latency, those are really useful to, 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 to keep an eye on the, on the services. Right, so um, let's jump into the configuration now and show you how Genios is configured in order to, to get this uh, running. Right, I'm going to start with the NetProbe configuration. So um, the dynamic entity section of the NetProbe configuration has two key pieces of config that we need. Um, one is the collection agent parameters. Um, this really controls how, um, this really allows the, the NetProbe to manage the collection agent. So both collection agent and NetProbe are sitting side by side and, and having the NetProbe manage the life cycle of the collection agent makes it a lot easier for us, um, which means we can manage the configuration here uh, centrally, uh, you have access to um, all of that. So you don't have to log into the box uh, on the edge to do uh, do any of that. So we'll allow the NetProbe to manage the collection agent um, and the plugins that we need to run. The second bit of setting is the mapping type. And this really says um, you know, what types of data we want to collect and what do we want to do with the data when we receive it um, in order to create the, the, the genuine data structures we need. All right, so let's take a look at the mapping type in a bit more detail. Um, so mapping type contains one or more um, plugins or collectors, as they're called in the collection agent. Um, and in this case, I have a collector configured to, um, to listen for the open telemetry data. Um, and we also have some mappings that define um, once we receive the data, what do we, how do we want to create the, the Genios data structures? Uh, and we also have a sampler, an FKM sampler added to this mapping type. And that's how the FKM um, sampler was automatically created when we started receiving the log data. Um, so this really allows for uh, log streams that are picked up by the plugin to be monitored automatically. Right, now let's look at the collector config. Um, so here we, we got the open telemetry plugin configured. We have a number of plugins available um, and the open telemetry config is fairly uh, straightforward. Um, so we are listening on the default port for any data coming in. Um, I haven't got any of the other sort of TLS and authentication config in here. Uh, so that keeps it pretty simple. Um, there are lots of uh, flexibility around how we um, gather the, the resources and uh, sort of attributes from the uh, instrumented application. So a lot of the time, um, the automatic instrumentation can throw a lot of attributes at us. Um, so you need that flexibility to decide um, uh, what you want to actually bring into Genios um, in order to create the data structures and the state tree in the way that you want to see it. Um, and the last thing I want to look at is the uh, the mapping. So this is essentially um, defining as the data comes in, how do we want to create the, the, the Genios data structures dynamically? So here we are saying the service name is going to be mapped to entity. Uh, the span kind is a data view. And we also want to pick up a couple of um, attributes and we're going to create them as entity attributes. So you can use that in your uh, in your Active Console uh, and in your um, in your data views. Um, so really, th this config is what's driving in terms of you know, creating that um, entity sampler data view on the fly. Um, you don't have to specify all of them. Uh, so you could, for example, specify the rows, the sampler, but you don't have to. The NetProbe can work some of, some of these things out, and it will do its best to create the structures in the way that, um, that makes sense. Right, so that's, um, that's all the configuration. Uh, and essentially, this config is, is what's driving, um, allowing us to, to essentially um, receive data, create the entities dynamically, uh, and to essentially enable monitoring in a way that uh, works in a highly distributed environment. Um, now, I want to run through a quick scenario now. So um, I'm going to send some uh, log data 
uh, from the, the backend service, um, which has got some issues in it. Um, so we can see the FKM log was, FKM samplers created uh, and it's picked up the log um, and there are some errors in the, in the, in the log um, indicating there's some issues with the backend service. Um, now let's just go and kill the, uh, the backend service and see what happens. So let's kill that service. Um, we can see the front end is still running. That's still fine. Uh, but if you click uh, to get some more data, then the back end is not there. So because we just killed it. Um, right, so that should trigger an alert in here. So we can see um, the front end is now complaining that the, um, the requests are not getting through. So the error count is now increasing and that's triggered an alert now uh, in, in Genios. So this is really a good way to, to, to figure out uh, you know, when, when things go wrong in the app. So let me just restart the app again. Um, the backend app, and uh, hopefully that should clear the alert. Um, there we go. We've got some data that should clear the alert, and it should all get back to back to green. Give it a second. Oh, there we go. Cool. Um, oh, we still have the um, the FKM sampler, so let me clear that as well. Uh, now everything is back to back to green. So yeah, hopefully that gives you an idea of um, how to configure the OpenTelemetry plugin and what you can do with it in Genios today. Um, so just to finish off, uh, two key takeaways. Uh, first, the, the visibility into highly dynamic and distributed environments um, mean that the monitoring has to be dynamic too. Um, as apps scale up, monitoring needs to dynamically scale up. Um, secondly, um, standardizing on a common sort of format like open telemetry across your apps um, will help reduce complexity. 